Hi everyone. So welcome back to another yoga video with me. Hopefully this is the last online yoga video that we have to do and we can go back to face-to-face -face classes, which were really awesome before. So for this class, we're going to be focusing on Hatha yoga. Hatha yoga, as I mentioned briefly in my last video, is a really traditional form of yoga. And it was the very first form of yoga I was actually taught in and became fully qualified in. Oh, sorry, my computer's just playing up. Let's get rid of that. Sorry about that. So yeah, it was actually the first type of yoga I became fully qualified in. For this class, we're gonna be focusing on creating really deep stretches, really slow movements, with strong emphasis on mobility. And this is really where my passion for mobility and functional flexibility and strength came from. So I really hope that you'll enjoy it. I've got some really traditional happy music playing today. And um, yeah, let's hopefully everyone really likes it. And again, let me know what you think, feel free to send me a message or anything like that. So to start off, we're actually going to be starting off lying down. I'm not going to lie down just because I want you all to be able to hear me. But just to give you a look, everyone actually needs to be lying down on their backs, arms out by the sides, let your feet drop out, let yourself be fully comfortable and fully at ease. In Hatha Yoga, we start with the Yoga Nidra. Today, we won't be starting with the Yoga Nidra because that is a really, really long meditation intro. And sadly, we don't have time for that today, but we are going to start with some mindful focus on the breath. So as you lie here in Shavasana, allow yourself to fully notice any and all sensation within your body. Notice where your breath is. We know by now that a healthy breath is deep, long, slow and steady in the belly and chest, not just in the chest and shoulders. As you inhale, feel your chest and belly rise with air. I want everyone to take in the intention of today's practice, which is relaxation and mindfulness. And as you exhale, let go of the stress, negativity, self-judgment, and self-criticism. Let it all go, it's not gonna serve you any good today. Allow yourself to diffuse any and all stress. With each inhale, taking in that intention, with each exhale, just letting go all that negativity that we don't need. From here, we are in touch with our breath. We are connecting mind, body, and spirit through the breath. We are in touch with our bodies. We are aware of all and any sensation that we experience. We are fully present in this moment, and we're now ready to commence our practice. Start by lifting your arms back over the top of your head on the mat. We are stretching and lengthening all the way from our fingertips down to our toes.
Take this stretch through diagonally. So focus on stretching from your right fingertips down to your left toes. And then from left fingertips down to the right toes, focus on stretching and lengthening diagonally. And relax. We're going to come into our reclining foot pose. So taking one foot up, we're lifting up onto the side of the body. You can either have your top arm down on top of your body or meeting your other arm. It's totally up to you. This is our reclining Buddha. Let's switch to the other side. This pose is all about relaxation. And let's release back down onto the back. From here, bring the knees in towards the chest. Let's focus on massaging our lower back and our hips, rocking from side to side, whatever feels comfortable for you. As you'll probably notice throughout this practice, or maybe throughout a few of the videos I've done with you guys, a lot of yoga postures overlap between styles of yoga. Through both our last videos, we did cat cow. We've got to be doing cat cow again today. Through our last videos, we did down the dog, doing down the dog today. We did these in our last videos. We're back here doing it again. The only thing that really changes is the order, how long we spend in this pose, or different ways we can angle with our poses. And from here, coming into Upanasana, lifting the head up off the mat, squeezing shoulders towards the knees. If at any point your head needs to rest, you make it to the sore, feel free to drop the head back down. Releasing one leg, not letting it touch the ground, maintaining that other knee in towards the chest. Let's switch. Switching again. And one last time switching, not letting that leg hit the ground. Releasing the head, releasing feet onto the mat, bent knees, send the arms out at shoulder high. We're gonna bring in some spinal twists. Drop the knees in one direction, face in the opposite.
take your time. There's absolutely no rush with these postures. Just nice and slow, really flowing movement. When you're ready, we're going to come back into the center. So bringing knees back up towards the ceiling. We're going to bring the knees back in towards the chest, holding onto our knees. We're bringing some separation between our knees, just letting them drop out to the sides. If right here, this stretch is enough for you and your body, you're feeling a really good, intense, deep stretch into the hips and the groin. Stay here, otherwise we're gonna come into our happy baby. So in our happy baby, elbows are always on the insides of the knees, hands are always on the outside of the feet. They are always directing straight up towards the ceilings, not out to the sides, not in towards each other. If you're one of those people, just go back to holding onto the knees or bring your hands down further on the legs. So hold on the outside of the ankles, maybe. Let's incorporate a bit of a rocking from side to side if you're comfortable. When you're ready, coming back in to center, coming back to stillness, bring the knees in towards the body, go back to giving yourself a lower back and hip massage. Sending your legs out long on the mat and arms beside the body. From here, I'm gonna to come to a movement with our breath. This is a really traditional Hatha flow here. So if you've done Hatha before, you've probably done something along these lines. To give you just a little demonstration, we're gonna be using our breath to raise our arms and our legs. And then inhale to raise the arms. Exhale, lower the arms, lift one leg. Inhale, lift the arms back up. Exhale, arms and legs down. Take it through into the other side. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, arms down, leg up. Inhale, bring the arms back up. Exhale, both down. You wanna try and incorporate your movements with me. Let's inhale to raise the arms. Exhale, lower the arms, lift one leg. On your next inhale, bring your arms back up. Exhale and release both. Into our other side, inhale, arms. Exhale, arms down, leg up. Inhale, arms up. Exhale and release. In your own timing, let's continue these movements. Now 
This is all about connecting our body to the breath. We're stretching into the backs of the legs at the same time. Working on creating symmetry through the body. Symmetry through the body is a big part of Hatha Yoga because in Hatha Yoga, we focus on our spine, which is referred to as our Shashumna, trying to maintain balance between our right side, which is referred to as our Pingala, and our left, which is referred to as our Ida. This is all about the balance between active and passive balance between hot and cold, feminine and masculine, all binary opposites in our bodies, minds, energies, everything like that. So our left and right sides in yoga are often symbolized by the sun and the moon, the sun being the right side, our pingala, oh, I almost messed up, <laughs> our pingala, warm, active, masculine energy and our Ida, the left, the moon, passive, cool. Oh, I keep messing up now I'm talking. And feminine energy. Not necessarily feminine and masculine as in female and male, but more and so of what that energy encompasses as a whole, not just through gender. Couple more times, taking this through. Inhale, arms, exhale, arms down, like up. Inhale, arms up, exhale, release. Inhale, arms, exhale, arms down, like up, opposite side. Inhale, arms back up, exhale and release. One more time, wherever you are. And back to stillness. Bending at the knees, we're bringing our feet down onto the mat, lifting up the feet, placing our hands behind the backs of our knees, coming into a deep stretch for our hamstrings, placing one ankle on top of the other knee, linking our fingers behind the back of the knee. If that's not a smooth transition into the stretch for you, try and just lift the ankle on top of the knee while your foot's on the mat. So if you can touch the thigh or touch the back of the thigh and then wrap your fingers around. It's up to you. From here, with our figure four stretch, you can keep the knee bent or straighten if you wish. And we want to bring legs in towards the body to a point that we're comfortable. Focusing back on that breath. Long, slow, steady inhale in through the nose. And a full, complete exhale back out through the nose. Nostril breathing, I've talked about it many times. Really important in yoga. Particularly Hatha Yoga. And for that reason, I will be incorporating some breathing techniques during our final meditation today. Let's release and take us through the other side. Remember, we're not always the exact same either side of our body. If you're able to stretch deeper on one side than the other, this is totally normal. Do not beat yourself up about it. Don't try and encourage a deeper stretch on that other side. Just listen to your body. Remember the difference between pain and effort. Effort is great. We never want to experience pain. Pain 
is not a yogic sensation. One of the ways in which yoga is encompassed in life and one of the most important and valuable lessons through yoga is that of ahimsa. So some people may have already heard of that word before in any kind of um, more or less any kind of other forms of yoga or anybody who knows a lot of Sanskrit, but ahimsa is the practice of non-violence. So this could be read in many different ways, but one way which is really important in yoga, the practice of non-violence on ourselves. So this is treating ourselves with kindness and treating our bodies with kindness as well as other people, animals, or facets of life. Right, let's release. From here, I'm gonna come into more of a flowing movement. This is a bit different to what we've done for most of our practice so far. This is a stretch for our spine, and it'll also be a stretch for the backs of our legs. So lifting our legs up off the mat, holding onto the knees. We're doing some spinal rolls. So tapping our toes as we come up. Oh, look at my hair. <laughs> tapping our toes as we come up and swing back. Seeing if you can tap the toes behind you, hold them to the lower back if you need. And tapping the toes back. Even if your spinal roll just looks like that, you're not actually tapping the toes, that's totally fine. If we can tap the toes though, this is great because we will be coming into a flower pose. Couple more times. And the next time that we roll back, we can either have hands on the mat or hands on our lower back. We're going to come into our plow. If that's not comfortable, we can just do a spinal hold. Or just hang the legs. It's up to you. Let's roll the legs down. Coming up to our boat. We're just holding here for a moment. We're not holding for too long. Couple really deep, slow breaths. And ground the feet, swing the knees around. Let's come to our tabletop. Knees under the hips, wrists under the shoulders. Let's draw in that cat cow with the breath. We've done it a million times. By now, you guys are probably all absolute pros. Let's round the back as we inhale, tuck chin to chest. Exhale, slightly drop the spine, slightly looking up. Couple more times, slow movements, great for our lower back, our mid back, and our digestion.
and we're coming back to center from here coming into our spinal seas i really don't like being too bossy during the yoga class but it's really important with this pose that you listen to my instruction there's no nice way of putting that so make sure you really listen because this is why that people really do tend to map up there's nothing wrong with mapping up the pose but you're just not going to get the benefits or the stretch at all for this we are swinging our hips to one direction so you see my hips swinging in one direction they are literally moving to that side the side that we move to we shift our upper body so we swing around the same direction so we want to connect our shoulder to our hips so if you were to look at my spine from a bird's eye view you'd see that my spine is going like that in the shape of a c because my shoulders and my hips are going in the same direction we're not in a diagonal often people send their hips one direction and we look over the opposite shoulder we don't want to be like that. We want to swing our hips over, feel the shift of the weight, and then also shift our upper body. So we're connecting our foot to our shoulder. Once you master that, you'll actually find a really great stretch. As we shorten and contract on one side of our ribcage, we are opening up and stretching out on the other side. Just a couple more of these. and coming back to center. From here, let's just take a moment, bring the knees further apart. If you want to cross the ankles, you can. Coming into a child pose. Shifting our weight back to our tabletop. From here, we're going to draw in a stretch for our shoulder mobility. This is our thread the needle. We have done it before. Inhale, open up through one side of the body, open up through the chest, come down, bring the arm through the gap, down onto the shoulder. We're resting here. Focus on the breath, you're going to open up your chest, bring your arms on the ground around your back, tucking it in between your torso and your thigh. Let's slowly release, bring that hand back down to the mat if it wasn't there. Let's inhale, bring that arm back up, and exhale to release. Let's take this through on the other side now. So, inhaling, opening up through the chest. 
Exhale, bring your arms out, down onto the shoulder. If you want, release that hand, bring it around that gap. That's help open it up through the other shoulder and the chest. This stretch is really great for our shoulder mobility. We are going to bring in another stretch for our shoulder mobility pretty soon as well. Let's slowly release. Inhaling, bring the arm back up. And exhale, bring it down. From here, let's tuck under our toes. Bring our hips up to downward dog. In our downward dog, let's paddle our feet. Take time to really stretch out through the backs of the legs. Slow, controlled, deep breaths. From here, let's begin to walk our hands in towards our feet in a forward fold. If in your forward fold you need a nice generous bend in the knees, that is totally fine. Absolutely go for it. Let's hold on to the elbows for a moment and allow ourselves to rock from side to side. Great stretch for our lower back. and releasing the arms. From here, we're gonna come into your palm to foot pose. This is an energy draining pose. So either placing your whole palm under the hands like so, bending the knees is fine, or just placing the fingertips either way, all good. And we're just resting here. Focusing on the breath. Focusing on the stretch through the backs of our legs. and release the hands. If you need any point, bring the head up, get some blood to there, that's fine. But we are gonna to come to one last stretch here, interlace the fingers and drop the shoulders. Another stretch for our shoulders. And our shoulder mobility.
Let's slowly bring the arms back in towards the body. And then now bringing our heads up before we move. Just take a moment of stillness here. Close the eyes. Opening up through the palms. This is Tadasana, also known as the Mountain Pose. A pose of reflection and witnessing. When you're ready from here, open the eyes. We're gonna come into some standing stretches. Left leg behind the right, folding onto the left wrist, side stretch. And release, move to the other side. And release. Coming into a wide stance, we're bending into the elbows, toes out at 45 degrees. We're going to come down, bending into the knees, so in our goddess. Back's nice and straight, we're not lifting forwards, we're not shifting back. Bring in a neutral spine. Focusing on the breath. Hands to prayer, coming down into a side lunge on one side. It's okay if your side lunge is up here, we just want to be feeling a stretch. Coming down onto the hips, tucking the foot in towards the body. Coming into a side stretch, holding onto the opposite ankle, stretching through the side. And release, coming back up, hands to prayer, shifting the weight back up. Back to our goddess. Does not have to be graceful, just make your way back up. And take this down to the other side. So we're side stretching, coming down to a side lunge. No matter where you are in your side lunge, as long as you're feeling a stretch. When you're ready, come down onto the hips, tucking the foot in towards the body. Then I come into our side stretch.
slowly lifting back up, shifting the weight back up to our goddess. Once again, focusing on the breath, focusing on the spine. We've got a nice straight spine. Belly's not coming forward. Hips are not coming back. Nice and straight. Straightening the legs, stretching out the arms. Bring the arms back, face up. And drawing the arms around, tapping chin into the chest. Once again, draw the arms out, stretch them back. We're looking up. And we're coming in this time, other arm on top. <laughs> Tucking chin into the chest. And release. Bring your feet in. So they're just a little bit wider on hip width apart. Our toes are still slightly pointing out at a 45 degree angle. From here, I'm going to bring through three rounds of salutation. On our third round, we are going to come down into our yogi squat. <clears throat> so let's inhale, collect all the light, love, positive energy. Exhale, draw it into the heart. Twice more. Inhaling and exhaling. One last time. Let's inhale. As we exhale, drawing hands into the heart, coming down to our yogi squat. Nice and straight spine. So many benefits for our body. Great for releasing and relieving stomach cramps, menstrual cramps, constipation, bloating, lower back pain. Let's take your side stretch, so hands opposite ankle, stretching over to the side. Swapping sides. And coming back to center from here, hand releasing the arms. This is an optional part. We're going to draw in a stretch for our shoulders while we're stretching through our hips. This pose helps improve our mobility and our flexibility as well. If we can, we're releasing the hands, connecting them at our backs, aiming to bring our palms together. So kind of like we're creating this, but behind our backs. I'll turn backwards so you can see me. Even if you just try to bring fingertips together. This is our aim. Bring myself back around. Just a couple more breaths here. If you can't do that at all, it's not comfortable, just stay in the regular. And let's release. I'm gonna come into one last pose while we're here, and this is a stretch for our mobility. 
This is really great for our hips, hip flexors, groin, all of that area. So just give you a show, kind of have your palms together and bring the knees down either side, come back up, take it through into the other side. Try and move really slowly with stability. Each time I'm going to bring the hips up. It's really important that you are moving slowly because I don't want anyone to injure themselves. If this is something that you really, really struggle with, just means maybe focus a little bit more on some deep stretching through the hips and the groin. Couple more times. The next time that we come over to the right side, we are going to stay here in the stretch with our knee bend, just like that. We're actually going to come to a pose called animal relaxation. Inhale, draw your arms up, exhale over this knee. This is our pose of animal relaxation. Slowly releasing, lifting the body back up. Let's take it through to the other side. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, pose of animal relaxation. So we're lifting ourselves back up, coming back to our yoga squat, drop the hips, bring the feet in together so we're in our butterfly. In our butterfly, we're going to be taking through our last round of stretches or the saunas before we come into our final meditation. To get us started here, let's just work our spine. Inhale, our hands together. Exhale to one side, drawing that spinal stretch. With the next inhale, come back up and exhale to the other side. Inhale, arms back up, exhale to a forward fold, stretching from our shoulders down to our fingertips.
bringing hands back in towards the body. Send your legs out long. Feel free to give yourself a moment to stretch and release through the legs. And when you're ready, you're going to come down onto your back into Shavasana. This brings us to our final meditation for this class. If you want to grab another layer to pop on, you want to get cold, you want to turn some lights off. I'm just going to give you a moment now to do whatever you need to do to make yourself comfortable for our meditation. Once you're ready or comfortable, we're lying in Shavasana. We are letting go of any and all stress or tension in the body. Letting the legs go out long, feet drop out to the sides, hips heavy, sinking into the mat, shoulders equal distances away from our ears. Bringing your attention back to the breath. Bring your focus to a long, slow and steady inhale in through the nose. And a full, complete emptying exhale back out through the nose. With each inhale, focus on taking in the relaxation that we have cultivated together today, whether it be this morning, this afternoon, tonight, wherever you are, whatever time it is. And as you exhale, let your body sink deeper into your mat. Feeling the rise and fall of each inhale and exhale in your chest and belly and just allowing yourself to completely be present, at peace and relaxed during this meditation. Mindfulness through connection to the breath helps us relax our nervous systems, which helps to relieve stress and anxiety, not just in this moment, but also it has long-term effects on our bodies and our mental health. For the last remaining moments, I'm going to leave you in stillness and silence to enjoy this practice. Feel free to continue on with this just really slow, restful breath. Otherwise, if you wish to include a breathing technique, I'll suggest to you the square breath. This is where we inhale for a count of five. Give a nose. Hold your breath at the top for a count of five. We then exhale for a count of five and hold at the bottom of our exhale for a count of five. If you wish to draw that square in your mind as you do this breath, it can just be really great, not a distraction, but remedy for stress and anxiety. Notice any colours, figures, shapes, patterns on the backs of your eyelids with your eyes closed. 
and just be present and enjoy this practice. Slowly bringing movement back into the body, wriggling the fingers and the toes, letting the head rock from side to side. Stretching and lengthening from the fingertips down to the toes. Bring your arms over the top of your head on the mat and allow yourself to stretch and lengthen. When you're ready, drawing the hands into prayer at the heart. I honor the place in you where the whole universe resides, a place of peace, light, and love. When you are in that place and I am in that place, we are in the same place and we are one. Namaste, everyone. Thank you for joining me again for this practice. Hopefully, fingers crossed, I'll be able to see you in person really soon. But once again, just thank you so much for joining me. I've appreciated all of your support so much and I hope you enjoyed this practice. Your bodies feel good. Have a great day today or a great sleep tonight. Thank you again. I'll see you soon.